I'm Rebecca Dana, and I wrote a story about Tumblr for this week's Newsweek. Tumblr is, um, it's, they like to think of it as a kind of aspirational, creative social network. So whereas on Facebook or Twitter, Twitter to a lesser extent, but I think on Facebook, it's really a replication of your real life world. Tumblr is a little bit different. Tumblr, you go on and let's say you want to be a, a great sort of photographer, a great artist. You don't necessarily follow all your friends on Tumblr. You follow, I think, kind of the people you wish were your friends. Beyonce has a Tumblr. Beyonce's daughter has a Tumblr. President Obama has a Tumblr. Um, people really love this site, and it would be interesting to see if they balk at all at, um, at these new revenue, at, at this new product, they call it, which will allow promoted posts and, and more of a presence of companies and brands on the main page of the site. Tumblr is really exploding at the same time that the New York tech community is really exploding. Tumblr is a New York-based company, always has been. And back in 2007, when David Karp founded the company, it was not as vibrant nearly as it is today. And so it kind of makes him a little bit of a pioneer. And if the company IPOs successfully, although they won't say that they have plans to do that anytime soon, it will really be kind of a, a flag in the sand for New York as potentially the tech capital of the future. I got a chance to really get to know the company very well in the last few weeks, which has been uh, totally fun. Tumblr is in many ways exactly what you expect from one of these buzzy, hot startups. They work out of two floors in Manhattan, and they have a ping pong table, and everybody looks like you know they're in high school, and their conference room is like, it might as well be a freshman dorm. They brought in $85 million in venture capital last fall, and in the time between then and now, they've gone from being a company of under 20 people to a company of more than 100. They've expanded their office space, they're debuting new products, they will never call this advertising. They're at pains to come up with words to, that are not advertising to describe what they're doing. But basically, they're letting these brands and also other individuals, you know, bands, artists, whoever can afford it, and most people should be able to, to promote their posts on the site. So you can take a specific blog post and you can pay money and you can put that blog post in front of the eyes of, of tens of millions of users rather than just the people who are following you. It feels a little granular and, and, and kind of minute, but this is huge in the tech world and lots of people will be watching very closely. New York-based startups tend to be more um, consumer facing, they tend to be in some ways more about content, whereas Silicon Valley startups, um, and I'm, I'm drawing really broad strokes here, but Silicon Valley startups tend to be um, uh, more technology focused. And so what we're seeing is, first of all, a kind of movement toward the established media brands, moving to New York to be closer to advertisers, and moving to New York for a higher quality of life. So we see these companies moving east, and we see companies like Tumblr and Foursquare and Etsy starting and really kind of being homegrown. And so it'll be really interesting to see how this, this non-advertising advertising model works for them um, as a kind of test case in, in some respects of the New York tech scene.